So here we go. So I'd like to welcome in a second my first guest. So my first guest is someone from the Royal Institution, one of my favorite scientific institutions. Um, this lady has been called a maths evangelist, a lifelong lover of all things mathematical. Uh, she was a secondary teacher. So I love secondary teachers. And now, these are normal times, she coordinates maths classes, master classes rather, for uh, UK nine and 10 year olds at the Royal Institution. So let's give a round of a virtual applause. You can actually, in your house, give a round of applause and we welcome Alison Eves. Come on, round of applause, round of applause, round of applause. Hi, Bobby. Hello. Hi, Alison. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm excited. Uh, so you're you're the so you're the first person on our second shift. Cool. So we've done the nine p.m. to nine a.m. and now we're, we're starting the next day session. Yeah, very honoured. Very honoured to be here. I'm very excited to be part of this. Yeah. So tell me about your. I mean, the thing is, we've got people from different mathematical backgrounds. Some people who work at universities, some at colleges, some at primary. But I it was your secondary, so we we have something in common. Uh, yeah, I'm secondary maths teacher, but uh, at the moment um, I work for the Royal Institution in their primary maths master classes. So I work with some fantastic nine and ten year olds all around the country doing amazing maths from beyond the curriculum and sort of opening their eyes to the fact that maths is everywhere. Yeah, useful so be and beautiful. So for people that ha don't know too much about I hope people do. Tell us about the Royal Institutions. I think it's like I think it's one of the most amazing organizations we have. It is amazing. Um, Again, really honoured to, to work for them. Um, so the Royal Institution is all about um, letting people participate in science and people understand science and see how beautiful and useful it is in their lives. It's for everyone. Science is for everyone. Of course, some of us earn our livings doing maths and science, but uh, it's for everyone to enjoy. And it always makes me really sad when people think that si they're not scientists or science is not for them. So uh, that's the Royal Institution has been around since 1799. So it's got a great heritage and it's had some fantastic and very famous people work there. Um, 10 elements were isolated in our building in London. And we continue that work now. And probably what people most know us for um, at the moment is for our Christmas lectures, which happen every year. Michael Faraday founded them um, in, in the early 1800s and they've been going since then. And the first maths one was um, in 1984, I think. And since then we've had masterclasses because we thought, you know what, maths is not just for Christmas. And they exactly. were really successful. Uh, the BBC were a bit doubtful about whether we would, should have maths on the TV at Christmas, but uh, people really enjoyed it. And from that flowed the maths masterclasses so that people can enjoy extra special maths all year round. And then this year we obviously had in Christmas, we had a math set of lectures, didn't we? He did, Hannah Fry, who I believe is coming up later on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just do a few shout outs on YouTube to show this is live because sometimes I did this once with my students where we had something that was meant to be like a live Zoom thing, but I pre-recorded it. So I had not any, any responses. Does this show you that we are live on Saturday at nine, at 11 minutes past nine. We've got Jeff, we've got Mihai from Bucharest, Romania. Uh, we've got Roel, Oliver. Lampshade, that's an unusual name. I'm sure there's a lot of math stuff about Lampshade. Roll, Hacker King, and Mohammed Yazin. So hello. And so Alison's going to do some tricks for us. Some... I am indeed. And um, Bobby, although I've met you a couple of times at the Royal Institution, um, I, I don't know the bit of information that I'm now going to find out from you using the magic of maths. Um, I think you can confirm. Because <laughs> I am going to find out what your birthday is. Ooh. But only using magic, not by asking you what your birthday is, okay? Because I don't, I don't already know your birthday. Okay, okay? Well, let's see if this works. So I'm hoping that in a minute I'm going to uh, share a slide. Let's see if that works. Okay, can you see that? Can you yes. see my slide? I can see your slide. Okay. So um, I'm going to see if I can work out your birthday using the magic of maths. Um, so obviously I don't want you to tell me anything that you're writing down. I just want you to keep a record of this. And if people who are watching would like to play along um, and work out their own magic number, that would be brilliant because I might ask you to uh, type your number into the chat in a few minutes, okay? So are you ready? Yes, born ready. So the first thing I want you to do is to think of the month number of your birthday. So for example, if you were born uh, in October. This is the 10th month, so you would be writing down 10 now, okay? I'm thinking of it. Uh, now, can you double that number? Each time we're doing an operation, we're working with the number that we had um, at the end of the last line. So it's just a continual process and you end up with one number at the end. Okay, so you doubled your birth month. 
Yes, done that. Could you add five, please? Okay. And then multiply by 10. And the next thing I'd like to do is to add 11. So we're testing out all your mathematical operations mm, I know, here. I know. <laughs> now this is the one that people sometimes find tricky, but you would probably know a quick way to do this. Can you multiply by five? And some of the 10 year olds I work out with when I'm doing this will, will balk at this bit, but then someone will say, it's easy if you multiply by 10 and then halve it. That's the same thing. Yes. Anyway, have we got an answer? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, this could all go very wrong, couldn't it? <laughs> now, think about the day of the month that you were born on and add that day number on, please, to your answer. Yes, I've done that. And I'm sad to say that's the end of the actual maths, but we'll now do the magic. So if you could just tell me your final answer, but nothing else. Nothing else. Uh, five, one, eight. Five, one, eight. Eight. Yes, okay, so I'm praying that I've got my arithmetic correct. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so I'm going to type five one eight in there, and let me let me try and do a bit of magic now. Let me think. I'm I'm getting that maybe you were born quite early in the year. Correct. Uh, were you born in February? That is correct. Woo! The first bit of magic work. <laughs> February in there. And let me let me see what I'm getting now for your um, your day. I think you might have been born on a day that some people would think was unlucky, but not for you. Thirteenth. Yes, precisely. Wow. One day before Valentine's. Well done. I'm so pleased that your <laughs> that, uh, that the maths magic worked there. <laughs> Ooh, <that> okay. Is... <laughs> so that that's a bit of maths magic. I didn't know you. I don't know your birthday, but by you giving me that number, five hundred and eighteen. I could work out when you were born, okay? I don't know if anybody else is uh, beginning to write into the chat if they've got a number, but in the meantime, I'm just going to um, resume and talk to you about another example. So in case people wanna um, follow through, okay? So I wanna talk to you about the birthday of Florence Nightingale, who is one of the mathematicians that I most admire. Most people don't know her as a mathematician, but um, she was a fantastic mathematician. Her birthday was the 12th of May, 1820. So this year was supposed to be a big celebration for her being 200. But of course, some of that stuff didn't happen. Anyway, if your birthday was the 12th of May, and you were doing my calculation, and you were Florence, you would put in five for your month number, then you would double it. So obviously, she would be at 10 then, then she would add five, 15. Multiply that by 10. So nice bit of multiplication there. Add the 11 on. Here's the tricky bit, multiply by five, to get to 805. And so if Florence was on our show, she would have said, my, my magic number is 805. And I would have been able to tell her that she was born on the fifth month and on the 12th day from that, okay. So, oh, I forgot to add her day number. I need to get to that. That's her magic number. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't have done it otherwise because I didn't have any information <laughs> about a day number. <laughs> okay. So 817 is her magic number and it's her 200th birthday. Okay. So that's the trick. Has anybody, has anybody typed in their magic number and they'd like me to tell them their birthdays? So let me go for, uh, we've got Andrew Newton has 926. Okay. I, I picked just... Newton because it's a great name. Okay, can I just pick, <laughs> just so I put him in here? Sorry, what was his name? Oh, okay. it, so Andrew Newton is nine two six. I apologise that I've written his name wrong. I'll do that <laughs> in a minute. Um, so let me see, Andrew. I think that perhaps you are a midsummer baby. I think you were born in June. Oops, I really can't type this morning. And I think the day you were born might be oh. It really is midsummer. Is it the 21st of June? So, uh, um, Andrew Newton on uh, YouTube, can you please confirm for us <laughs> your date of birth? <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, can you send us your three digit uh, pin code, <laughs> your, your, your mother's maiden <laughs> name, and your place of birth? <laughs> okay. So, um, 
we could we could carry on and hopefully other people can try this out on people they don't know the birthdays of less impressive when you do it on your mum because she probably thinks you should know her birthday anyway but uh but that's that's the lovely maths magic and it gets a great is that good from uh, Andrew? Andrew's, uh, Andrew's giving us a, a big thumbs up saying yes fantastic so um I hope people will enjoy using this uh maths magic um to impress people or to just excite them. Would you like me to tell you about the maths behind it though? Let me just see, let me see if I can hear. So on YouTube, would you like to find out why it's happening? See, in an audience, we'd go like, it, when, at the yeah. Royal Institution, when you get the kids, like, do you often get them to interact with like, what's their reaction when they first see someone like you work they, out the birthday? Like? They think this is amazing. They really love it. And they all want to tell me their magic number and get me to tell them their birthdays. Um, <laughs> And then they all want to take the trick away and try it on people in their class later. So it is a really, it's a crowd pleaser. Um, and it's really satisfying as well if you can work out what's going on. Um, so at this point, I would ask my class, my master class, uh, who knows what I'm doing. But I would do a few examples so that you would be able to see. So actually, let me show you. I might show you a few more examples so that you can see because I think it would help people too. Yeah. And I think, you, I think YouTube, they, they want, they want to know. So we've got um, uh, Oliver Dunk, Jared Bennett, Lifelong Nerds, Lampshade. Is it Blobbert? Dr. Blobbert? Sudendu, so Matt Smith, Adrian, uh, Stefan. They all want to see the, the, the method behind the madness. Okay. That's so I wondered if it might help you if um, I showed you, like, my magic number is uh, 1,321, but my birthday is October the 16th. And Michael Faraday, as I mentioned, very oh, important. Happy belated birthday, Alison. Oh, thank you. Yes, a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Um, and then Michael Faraday, his birthday was September the 22nd, and his magic number would be 1227. Yes, or 1,200. Oh, I've just given something away there. Um, so you probably <laughs> haven't got time to look at it. In, in a masterclass, they would have more time and more examples, and they might start to see what mathematicians love to do, spot some patterns because there is, of course, a pattern there. Um, maths by itself is magical, but I'm not. <laughs> so a bit of algebra here. This is what's actually going on, those who want to know what the algebra behind it is. So M is your month number. So when I ask you to think of that, we can just think of it as M. We double it. As mathematicians, we would write that as 2M and add 5. So now write 2M, add 5. Now I want to multiply everything by 10. So instead of having 2M, I've now got 20M. And instead of having 5, I've got 50. Now I add 11 on, so that becomes 20m, add 61. And now I multiply everything by 5, so my 20m becomes 100m, and my 61 becomes 305. Now lastly, I do need a bit of information, which is what I forgot when I was talking about Florence. I need to think about your day number, so I get you to add that on, D. So that's the total I've got. And from having 100M plus 305 plus D, I can work out what M and D is. How, you ask? Let me just try and show you that. So if I think about writing this as a column, the 100M would have whatever M is, is the number between one and 12, and then two zeros because it's been multiplied by 100. You need to move it over because of that place value. And then if I write the 305 underneath in a column, and then I write the D. Now, D, of course, can be any number between 1 and 31. So it might be in the tens as well as the units. But basically, I've got this column sum going on. Does that make sense, Bobby? Yes. Yeah, OK. And if I think about adding my tens and units, I've got 0, 0, and add 0, 5, and add D. So in my tens and units column, I will have D plus 5. And I've written that on the slide there. Got that. And separately, thinking of the hundreds, all I've got out in my hundreds or thousands columns is M and three. So there I will have M plus three. So when you give me your number, 518, I mentally put a line between the hundreds, the five, and the tens and units, the 18. Mm -hmm. And I know that the five that you've given me is your month number plus three. So I took three away from five and got to two. So that was February. Nice. And then your 18, I took away five and I knew your birthday was the 13th. Okay, so here's a just, just to sum it up. What you did was you manipulated your month number to be in the hundreds column and then I'd got you to add three to it to disguise it. And then we'd done similar manipulation, but with the day number and that ended up with five added to disguise it. So it's not too obvious to you what I'm doing. And that's why, uh, you ended up with 518, Florence ended up with 817. 
So take away three from the eight to get the fifth month and take away five from the 17 to get the 12th day. Oh. And that is my magic trick. And I hope that you will all enjoy amazing. Well, as I say, maybe not your closest friends, family, <laughs> But, but it's a nice thing to, to show and it's also really nice to understand the logic behind it, which is always what we like about maths, really, isn't it? Just to, it looks like magic, but it's very exciting to understand yeah. why it works. I, I love that thing because it's one of those um, bits of maths where at first it seems like perplexing. It feels like, like some sort of wizard conjuring up some or mind reading or perhaps you've got like a, you know inside inside person but actually after when you explain it it's like ah oh, you can see there's like a I think I love about maths there's there's a structure behind the 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 magic yeah indeed that's what, exactly right when did you first come across that Alison was that with the Royal Institution or did you see that before? no actually I went to a um a day when I was training to be a teacher about sort of inspirational maths and bringing fun into the classroom being able to do some things like this and uh, so it was someone called Jim, who I've now forgotten his last name. And oh. I was in Cardiff on the teacher training. So there you go. <laughs> well, th thank you, Jim. Hat so, tip to Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Hat tip to you. Um, so, Alison, tell me about how you got onto maths. So was there a stage in your life when you were in primary or secondary you thought, I quite like this subject? Or did it I come did. later? No, it was really strange because <clears throat> I was like getting to the end of doing uh, O-levels in those days, GCSEs, and, uh, and thinking what I was going to do next. And then I just thought, well, I don't even have to think. I know what I want to do. I want to do maths at university. Imagine how wonderful it would be to spend three years just doing maths. So obviously then my, my path through uh, A-levels was, was set so that I could realise that ambition. And it's really strange, actually, because when I was, th I sort of had that conscious um, decision making, what am I going to do at university at that time when I was 16? And I thought, I don't even have to think. I know what it is. So I think I've just really always loved numbers, loved maths. And um, yeah, as I just said, I'm not sure, as you said in the introduction about being called a maths evangelist, but actually my vicar called me that. And I'm not sure oh, okay. whether it was a compliment or not. But anyway, I'm quite happy to uh, go out. And it really breaks my heart when people say that the maths isn't for them or they don't understand maths or they, they're no good at maths. And I was like, it's... Maths is for everyone. Let yeah. me get on my soapbox. No, no, no. Get, get, we'll, I'll, I'll happily hold up the soapbox for you because I think it is so many people think that they can't do maths, they can't do numbers, they're quite negative. And I think sometimes when people get things wrong in school, they think, oh, I, they sort of almost like put their, almost like in school, sometimes I'll give a piece of work to a student, even if it's a fun piece of work, and they'll push it back saying, I can't do it. And they haven't even looked at it. They haven't yeah. tried. So I think it's trying to help people overcome their negative perceptions and things like those magic tricks are really ways of really especially for younger people capturing their imagination yeah yeah I mean I want to be careful because um, I don't want people to think that maths is just a set of tricks mm. um, I want them to know that maths is beautiful for itself and I think that's one of the one of the things that captured me about maths is that it's just the more you find out about it the more you see it all fits together into being this beautiful whole and you can look at a problem um, using numbers or you can look at it using words or you can draw a picture for it or you could draw a graph and, and all of those different ways of thinking about something will tell you something else about it and you'll know this one of the magic things about being a teacher is there'll be a bit of math I'm really familiar with I'm introducing it to some children and one of them may um, look at it in a completely different way and notice something about a pattern that I've never noticed and they'll say yeah. oh miss da, 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 da. I was like wow you're right isn't maths incre incredible so it yeah is. I continue to be excited oh, I'm so <laughs> glad um, we've got one question here about the Royal Institution someone's asking um, are the Christmas lectures going to happen this year well they are but as in 2020 tradition not quite the way they normally happen so sadly uh, we will not have a live audience which is obviously going to be like a major change but we just couldn't um, we couldn't plan for that um, because we know, you know, nobody knows how things are going to go in the next few weeks. But we will still have the magic of science and the magic of the Christmas lectures. And this year, we're very excited. It's um, going to be about climate change, different aspects of climate change. And for the first time, we've got three different lecturers. So each looking at different aspects of climate change. And two weeks ago, we had a uh, youth summit where lots of sixth formers came together virtually, and uh, they have suggested some of the things that our lecturers might talk about. So it's going to be really informed by young people in that way. 
because I mean I didn't don't think I mentioned the Christmas lectures are aimed for young people um, but everybody enjoys them you don't have to be young in years but uh, yeah so we so with that, that's a different element we've done this year is that we've got the questions from the six formers uh, that will help our lecturers make sure they're answering the questions people want to know. Oh, um, and so will there be because I know the previous lectures are all available on the Royal Institutions yes. YouTube channel and normally they're broadcast on television then put on YouTube afterwards yep that's the same so they will be on um, they will be on television between Christmas and New Year same as usual and yeah do go and look at the old ones on our YouTube channel which is fantastic as uh, it's just a wealth of things there. You can spend five minutes or five hours or five days on the RI YouTube channel. It is fantastic. And we're oh, just celebrating you. getting 900,000 subscribers. So oh, that's the place to go if you want some more science and maths. So thank yeah. you, Alison. So what, if people would like to keep in touch with you, follow your mathematical adventures and activities, what's the best place for them to uh, see you? Is it, is it, uh, yeah, on, uh, on Twitter, I am just at Alison Eves with a capital A and capital E. So do go there. I uh, post um, pictures and information about masterclasses. In normal times, I'd be running around the country, uh, visiting and seeing lots of different schools and different pupils. And uh, so people can get involved via that if they want like their school to get involved. Do get in touch with me on Twitter or through the Royal Institution Twitter handle, which is just at RI underscore science. Thank you so much. It's half past. You've been a wonderful okay. first guest of my, thank my session. Thank you for having me. It's like I a really radio show myself. and um, you know, rolling guest, rolling host. But thank you so oh. much, Alison. <laughs> and I'm going to try. Um, thank you. So I, with my year sevens on Monday, we've got an assessment. But if we get the assessment done, I'm going to do this trick on them. Fantastic. If they're watching this now, don't reveal the secret. Yeah, don't tell anyone else. <laughs> thank you so much, Alison, for joining me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.